Oh, oh. yeah. So, uh, so Hurdle is actually doing the correct thing here. He's going to leave that gap next to Brian Heidkotter. And as we come up onto the front straightaway, Red Life Touring Cup is going to race for the third time this weekend, the penultimate race of the weekend at Circuit of the Americas in Austin, Texas. Waiting for the green flag to fly, Cayman versus Honda powered Mazda Miata. Then Nissan 370Z in row number two, an S2000, another 370 in RSX, and an MX-5. Green flag flies, we're racing in Grid Life Touring Cup, race number three, four wide already. They're gonna try it, here comes Boysen up the inside in the front wheel drive RSX. Height cutter goes defensive, but no one's gonna beat Aaron Lichty to turn one. Poison goes for second almost at the apex, but this is what happens in turn one. Things compress down so quickly. Emil Tap sweeps the outside. Jeremy Boysen side by side for third with Austin Hurdle. It's 370Z versus the black RSX. That thing is on fire at the start right here. And then Brian Heitkotter in the black C shows the nose of the S's hoop uh, box. It's Heitkotter. Yeah, he's going to lift. Eric Meadows is going to see the inside. Big jump over the right hand curb. That the yellow curb he struck him one of them earlier today. And here comes Katil sliding up the inside of Morrison. It's charged from the back. He's coming forward quickly, but he's going to have to shoot the gap here between Morrison and Meadows and that door is going to shut. The Black S2000 Morrison really struggled on the start. He may not have been in the right gear, or just in a bad spot in the gearing, but he's fallen way back the field. Eric Cotil in the white and red Civic now hounding Eric Meadows in the silver NC Miata. He shows the nose of the inside, but Aaron Lichty has a lot of pressure. He has not really been in this position yet this weekend. And now that, that big Cayman out front, you don't typically think of that as a very big car, but compared to the Miata, it's huge. He'll be in the slipstream for the back straightaway behind him. Some shuffling, but Boysen up to third and an immense start for him. Now down the back straightaway, speed's climbing well over 130 miles an hour, top of fifth gear for most of these cars. Cayman versus Miata, then RSX, and then it's that Nissan 370Z of Austin Hurdle who also had a great start. Then it's Heidkotter and Cotill chasing each other down the back stretch. Here's another driver we haven't talked much about, but we pointed him out in race number uh, two this morning. Dyson Pham in the blue S2000 coming from the back. Didn't get a lot of track time this weekend, but has raced with us a couple weekends. In fact, has won a GLTC race back in NOLA, and he charges the brakes down into turn 12 up the inside of Joel Morrison. Morrison tries to respond, but doesn't get the job done. That's one more position for Dyson Pham in the blue S2000. And opens the door for Jeremy Swenson recovering after that, uh, that spin he had at the top of turn one in race number two. Just had a tire up, didn't want to cut the tire down, so uh, came back on the rollback. He has since fixed that, that tire rub issue and is moving forward. That car's got a lot of torque and exits corners great, and he's moving forward here. Side by side, Cotill and Heitkotter as we head into the carousel. This should be for fifth, and uh, sorry, Cotill has the preferred line easily, takes the position, and that car should be nice flat out from this point. Up big bump right there at the exit of the corner, but now he's going to focus on the back of Austin Hurdle, who's still applying good pressure from Boysen. Saw that car wobble a little bit on the entry to turn 19, so a little unsteady for Hurdle, perhaps. Eric Cotill's had support this weekend from Hybrid Racing, a new sponsor on board that car. Without Hybrid Racing here, Cotill would not be running this race. He's had all sorts of stuff break this weekend. Uh, reliability issues, they've been there to help him out, so big props to that team for keeping that car running. A year's champion, needing a little bit of assistance this year. Speed of that came and finally showing a bit. He gaps uh, Aaron. Uh, sorry, he gaps Aaron. Uh, excuse me, Emil Tab by quite a bit. Now a challenge around the outside for Coutil. Uh, maybe tries to get a good slingshot down the hill towards turn two. And there's Dyson Fam who's now run down. Oh, look at this for third. Here comes Eric Coutil up the inside. Pass complete. Austin Hurdle a little bit slow through turn number two. Height counter is going to close that gap now. The two twin 370s running nose and tail through the S's. Look at the corner speed in the S's that Coutil carries. That thing is stuck to the ground. It looks like it's on rails out there. Yeah, I think on, on raw pace, that Civic is the only car that can beat the Cayman that's at the front. He's just got a long way to go to get there. It shows us at the inside of seven, takes the position easily. Look at the tire streak he left hanging the back end out on that front wheel drive car, but he's up to third on the podium now, and I agree, he would not have even made it out of the practice day if it wasn't for the support he had. And look for the race lead. Emil Tab is closing back in on Aaron Lichty's Cayman. That car struggles with the weight transfer and those high-speed S's, but now it's getting into the, the part of the racetrack where this Cayman really, really excels. These long straightaways where that platform is, the weight's not going to matter here, Tom. It's all about that power, but Cotill is lurking, and he is one of the quickest cars out there on the racetrack. Yeah, that Cayman just excels so well on the slow corners, and we talked about it in race two. They have so many slow corners off the acceleration zones in this track, and, and that mid-engine car just really, really does well in those, but you're right, he's a little bit lazy in the S's with the mid-engine platform. Speed down the back straightaway for Austin Hurdle, maybe a bit of draft off the RSX. Jeremy Boysen still holding that spot down. And look at how deep on the brakes Heitkotter is. He's really starting to trust him. Yeah, he's starting to feel that he can, he can push those braking zones a little bit deeper behind him. Dyson Fam, Eric Meadows having a bit of a moment. But Boysen, Hurdle, and Heitkotter, nose to tail here. This is all for about six spots as they streak through what I call the stadium section. Tight and twisty. And really, uh, the, the, the lighter cars really do a lot better in here. The front wheel drive is going to struggle in this area for Boysen's RSX. But he's like he's holding pretty strong right now. There's Morrison closing in on Fam and Jeremy Swenson taking it up. Look at these guys. Side
side by side as they head towards the carousel again. Hurdle defensive, Mike Cutter tries to go the long way around. He wants this spot, he's going to get a bit of a slingshot, but the passing opportunity at turn 19 is not great. You have to be pretty ballsy to make it happen. He's going to show the nose to apply some pressure. Oh, Hurdle, it, it worked. He has a bit of a bobble on the way and dragged the curb, and the car gets loose. Hyde Cotter might have a run-up into turn 20, but we know that, that car is not the best on the brakes. He does not have ABS functioning in that car, as far as we know. He's not going to trust it just that much. Tracks out at the exit of turn number 20. Cattill is up to third on the timing. It's a one-second gap between Aaron Lichty and Emil Tabbitt. Looking at the timing and scoring, purple lap for Eric Cattill. Last time by, it was the quickest car in this session at 2.30.036. He is the fastest car on the racetrack by three-tenths of a second. That uh, Honda Civic SI is coming forward as we've got other battles been packed. Gotta keep an eye on that Civic as he moves forward. Massive slide for Hurdle. That's a recall back to his street time attack days. Used to put on drift shows all the time and did it again coming off of turn number one. But he maintains the point that this uh, is really brought Brian Heikotter back up after losing a little bit of space on that front straightaway. And through the S's, again, Heikotter has a lot of experience in, in both early and amateur racing. And uh, he's going to put that pressure on Austin Hurdle, who's racing his first wheel to wheel racing this weekend. So this is the perfect example of an experience and experience being put to the test. How quickly can Austin Hurdle learn from the driver in his mirrors? And they're catching the fourth place car, Jeremy Poison, in that, R that black RSX, the 99 car, as we crest turn 10. Down the hill towards the hairpin here at turn number 11, which sets you up for the super long back straightaway. And we're losing touch of those front three. In the backdrop, you can see Eric Attila has halved that gap to Emil Tab. That 82 car is going places, and we've got a long way to go. We're only six and a half minutes in, and fingers crossed we've stayed great this entire time. If Cattil can run Lichty down from the back of the grid, that would be an amazing accomplishment. Look at this run. Austin Hurdle has a massive slingshot through the draft. Shows the nose early on the inside. He wants this position, and he's going to lunge deep on the brakes, but Boyson says, no, 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 I'm going to take this one back. Leaves him a little bit of space well, on the wide. nose, but runs wide doing so. They're going to go side by side. It's a drag race. Front wheel drive, rear wheel drive up to turn 13. I told you this is where the front wheel drive seemed to struggle. They can't quite get the power down here without pushing the nose. He's going to manage to salvage it, but uh, Hurdle's going to have to tuck back in line. And, and Hurdle has to not only look out the windshield, but look in the mirror because that Chris Forsberg Racing 370 is right there in the scrap for fourth. Not many people get this exciting of a debut wheel to wheel weekend, but Austin Hurdle has been in the thick of it the entire weekend, and he's showing a massive amount of maturity in wheel to wheel racing. Uh, for someone who is so new to it, he's really uh, paying attention to the space that he has around him and, and is aware of the cars in front and behind, battling for, at some points, podiums. Uh, the problem is he keeps uh, kind of putting the car in some odd positions. He just dragged the curb again. We saw that loosen him up a couple laps ago. Uh, the car also showing some signs of maybe a little bit of wear and tear with the rear end moving around on exits on some of those corners, too. On the front straightaway, Lichty leads this lap again. Cattill goes quicker. The 2.29, 2.82, that was faster than qualifying pace. He's still coming to the front. He's 1.8 back from the race leader. Meanwhile, for fourth, Poison up the front straight. Here's Hurdle on the driver's left. He's going to have a look into the first corner. Hike Cotter watching in the wings. He smells blood in the water if these two start to tangle. The front wheel drive RSX is so good on the brakes. Oh, big hop out of the inside There's turn. another one of those slides, and Hike Cotter this time capitalizes. They're going to drag race down through turn two, and uh, Hurdle is smart. Lifts, decides not to go side by side. He wants to stay in touch with these guys, so now Hike Cotter has an opportunity to make a move on Poison, who's been bulletproof so far. Look at the speed, that 370s he carries through the S's though, he's right on the tailpipes of that Acura RSX, now back to the right, this long right-hander, that front-wheel drive car is going to be struggling for grip from here, then up over the crest here at the top of turn 8 and 9 and 10, here comes High Cutter, keeps it a little tighter and he's closing in. So many line options in the transfer from 7 to 8, you see all three different cars on three different lines, Jeremy Boysen runs a little bit wide, but back at the front, Eric Coutille has gotten around Emil Tab in the S's, I bet that was exciting because Coutille is not afraid of some S's. Uh, and is now setting his sights on on the Cayman at the lead. And here comes Chris Forsberg racing 370 down the inside for fourth. He'll have the pass in, boys, and complete. Now down the back stretch, he'll have to defend from that Acura. Huge slide for Hurdle, dragging those Hoosiers out over the curbing. And now side by side again down the back stretch for fourth. But cue the Jaws music up front. Cattell's coming. Check the power on that RSX. I think High Cotter is the slowest car in the straight line of these three. Austin Hurdle has another run. They're going to end up three wide, I think, in the braking zone here. here Shows the nose up the inside, but that car is seeming to not have have a lot of rear grip. Oh, he's going to back out of that, but they're going to go nose to nose into turn number 12. Is Hyde Cotter too deep? Can he maintain the line? He does. Side by side through 12. Now he's going to run out onto the ripples and have a run into 13. He clears him and move Hyde Cotter to four. That RSX struggled off of that corner big time, so now it's a fourth place running order for Brian Hyde Cotter. Chris Forsberg Racing's debut weekend with this car, and uh, I think it's 
been a, a slow roll, but the momentum is building. That snowball's getting pretty big as their uh, gap is also big up to the top three, though. So this is definitely a battle for fourth. There was a three-car fight behind him uh, for seventh spot. Eric Meadows in the silver Miata, the Dyson Fam, the blue car. Jeremy Swenson is in that mix as well. They're doing their own sort. But this is the best battle on the racetrack, the 99 of Boys and the, the 370 C of Hurdle. And Hurdle's been bobbling here in turn 19 a lot. This is a very fast corner that requires a very specific setup. And Hurdle's been struggling a little bit with that turn. We should also say that I think that's probably the heaviest car on the grid. I think it's over 3,100 pounds. Uh, so that car is certainly the one that would likely fall off the most. Speaking of fall off, uh, Aaron Lichty expected that car to fall off over a race. So far, he is not showing signs of that. He's been consistent within a couple of tenths of his fastest lap the entire time. The problem is Eric Cotille, uh is faster. That time through, though, actually lost some pace. Uh, only a 231-1. He was in the middle of passing the real tab, so that might have held him up. Here it comes Hurdle on the outside of Boysen into turn number one. Going to try the over-under here. Not quite. Going to stick the outside, try to run down the hill towards turn two. Not going to get alongside. Now he will. Chose those for a second. Thinks better of it, Tom. That would have been a risky move. These two bickering has brought uh, Eric Meadows back into the fight. The Silver Miata, he's had a pretty quiet race, but has run these two down, so it's a three-car battle, but now one position back. Also notice the front bumper on Brian Heikotter's Nissan flapping in the wind on the braking zone in turn one. Hopefully that is secured well enough to maintain the rest of the race, but uh, a little bit of loose body work on the front of that car. Up at the front, er uh, Eric Attil is trailing Aaron Lichty by 2.7 seconds. It'll take nothing short of a miracle to run Lichty down from that far back, but the battles behind them are, um, are ablaze. Jeremy Boyson, Hurdle, and here comes Meadows. That wing on that car is a new addition this weekend, and it's treating him well here as he runs up to try to grab himself a top five. He has the past two cars to do it. And here comes Swenson up the inside of Meadows. That was a surprise. Where did he come from in that big V8 Corvette? Down the inside, he'll have it. And move on through. Actually, that was not uh, Meadows. That was actually uh, the... Yeah, he'd just gotten by Dyson Fam in the blue car, but now up the back straight away. You see Hyde Cotter up the road. He's fourth. Boys in fifth. Hurdle sixth. And now for seventh, it's... Meadows and Swenson. Corvette versus Miata. I can tell you which one will win this race. Yeah, he, uh, once he cleared uh, the battle behind, he's made up that ground really, really quickly. So I think the pace in that Corvette is building as well. But look at the brakes. Uh, totally different story on the brakes. Meadows shuts the door, keeps him tight to the apex, and now it's a drag race between two, two super different cars. The problem is on the outside. That is not the preferred line for turn 13, a braking zone, and Meadows shuts the door once more. That, that uh, Corvette is one of the heaviest cars here. Over 3,000 pounds. It's not going to perform very well in those tight twisties. Out front, though, Aaron Lichty brought this Cayman with the expectation it was going to fall off in a 15-minute race with rear tire temps. It has not shown any weakness this weekend. And while Eric Cotillo has made up eight spots this race, he hasn't been able to get too far. There is Eric Meadows defending from Swenson through the carousel here. Coming down to the last couple corners, Swenson from way back in the ground. Man, that Corvette looks slick. Uh, the profile in that car is just awesome with the little lip on the back, but it doesn't seem to have the cornering speed of the Miata. No surprise there. And now we get back to the part of the track where there are a couple of digs. But back at the front, something has happened. Oh, it's the checkered flag. Checkered flag happens, and Eric Cotillo went quickest, but not quick enough across the line. Aaron Lichty, three for three. This